In this video I will give you 5 reasons why I think the Fuji X100F is a pretty darn marvelous camera. Personally, I still think that a used X100T holds more value for money and that the X70 is a better fit for my style of street shooting. For me the X100 series is more of an all-around type of camera, but a good one at that after 4 generations. I've only had the camera for a week or so and chances are that it won't stay with me very long. So with that said, let's get into it. First off, the new sensor. I'm not one to rave about pixels and super sharpness, but boy this new sensor can put out some true magic. It's the same one you will find in the X-T2 and X-Pro2. If you haven't seen it, I have a video comparing those two as well. In all three cameras you can enjoy the rich contrast or go nuts with the dynamic range and pushable shadows. Another trick the X100F can do, unlike the X-Pro2 and T2, is high flash sync speed up to 1 1,000th of a second on the widest aperture. This is due to it having a leaf shutter. It's a shame it can't go full speed on all apertures like the X70. But to compensate they have put in a built-in ND filter, which of course can be handy for other things as well. Secondly, we have the fact that this is basically a Mini X-Pro2 for a lot less money. There is no getting around that being able to switch lenses on the Pro is a huge deal. You can use the modern sharp Fuji lenses or adapt cheap vintage glass with for example the Kipon close focus adapter. Loads of creative options. But if you are mainly going to use something like the 23mm f2, you really are getting pretty much the same camera in a smaller body for about the same price brand new compared to the X-Pro2 and lens used. Some features differ, like for example the 8000 shutter speed compared to the maximum 4000 on the X100F. But again, there is a built-in ND to compensate. The X-Pro2's autofocus is also faster. Wide open at close distances, the X100F, just like the predecessors, gets rather soft. But stopping down takes care of it and at such close distances you still get some separation. Next reason is the new button and control layout. The new configuration with everything on the right side a joystick, a button on the front and the added wheel are all welcome updates. And they left plenty of room for the thumb. The rear command dial isn't as loose and flimsy as it used to be either. And here the X100F actually outshines the X-Pro2 once again, since you are able to customize it much more. And all the buttons are much easier to get to on the smaller body, at least for my hands. Both cameras, however, is best used with a thumbs up in my opinion. The joystick is nice on both cameras, but more useful to me on longer focal lengths. For those of you that hate the new combined ISO and shutter wheel, on the X100F you can use the front dial if you want to. It's a darn shame though that the one thing I can't program on the X100F, unlike the X-Pro2, is the video record button. I like that I don't have to switch drive mode to enable video on the Pro, but on the X100F they went for the same setup as the X-T. And I know who cares about video on this camera. Well, me. 
It's actually the second to last reason to get it, in my opinion. They have updated the video quality a whole lot, and even the peaking works while recording. Like I said, for me this is a kind of a jack-of-all-trades camera that I can bring along for all kinds of shooting. And then it is nice to be able to record a quick video clip here and there as well. But the drive mode thing makes it less quick. And another thing, the ND doesn't work in video. What? Come on, it would have been so sweet! But let's stay positive on this, I'm happy with the up video quality and if you get a sound hood with the adapter you can use a screw on filter. The last and biggest reason why even though the X100T and S are so cheap on the used market you might just fork up for the new one anyway is the viewfinder. They have really made it great. The only bad thing I can say is that there's a tiny bit of distortion on the outer edge of the actual screen when using the electronic mode, but other than that, wow, it's so big and bright. It is a much better viewfinder than the one on the X-Pro2 in every single aspect. That's it, a great camera, perfect for the all-around shooter and not so shabby looking either. Check out my other videos if you like and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye.